This is going to be Bible villains. And we're looking at the man named Sisera in Judges chapter 4 and 5. And this man Sisera is an interesting character. He's a type of the Antichrist in the Old Testament, the ultimate villain. Now, historically, what you've got is Israel is being judged by God, and they've been sold into the hands of Jabin, the king of Canaan, and Sisera is the captain of his host, and he has control of 900 chariots of iron, and these guys mightily oppress Israel, and Barak and Deborah are the judges of Israel at this time, and they go after Sisera with about 10,000 men, and they give him such a fit that he starts fleeing away on foot. And he ends up going into the tent of a woman named Jael. And this woman tricks him into thinking that she's taking care of him, but then she takes a tent peg and ha hammers it right in his head. Pretty crazy story. And that's what you got historically. And what you've got doctrinally is, Barak uh, pictures Jesus Christ, who goes to war against Sisera, who's a picture of the Antichrist. Uh, Barak takes a woman with him, Deborah, and Jael, also a woman, ends up killing Sisera. This pictures the Lord coming back with his bride at the second coming. And since there is uh, two women involved, Deborah could picture Israel, the father's bride, and Jael could picture the church, the bride of Christ. And in Romans 16, 20, it talks about what we're going to do to the devil, what the Lord's going to let us do to the devil at the second coming. In Romans 16, 20, it says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So it, uh, it says, Satan will be bruised under your feet shortly. Now, you're no match for the devil right now, but when you come back at the second coming with the Lord, you can do anything. And what you've got here is a picture of the bride uh, smiting the head of the, the Antichrist and the devil. And inspirationally, uh, Jael took the workman's hammer and she smites a nail through the temples of Sisera. So you, you take your workman's hammer, your King James Bible, and you're ready for war. And be ready in case the evil one comes under your roof. Jael was ready, and the evil one did come under her roof. And she took that uh, tent peg, she took the workman's hammer, and she hammered it right through his skull. Your, your King James Bible is your workman's hammer. Now let's get into Judges. Look at Judges chapter 4 and verse 1. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And you know Ehud is the one that took that dagger and stabbed it into the gut of that man, uh, Eglon, and the dirt came out. And he delivered Israel. But now he's dead and they're getting in trouble again. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. So what's going on in the book of Judges is Israel is going back and doing evil in the sight of the Lord again. And each time they do this, the Lord stirs up an enemy against them. This way they will repent and seek help from the Lord. And when they do this, he just raises up a deliverer again. And these deliverers picture Jesus Christ, who's the ultimate deliverer. But notice the first two things about Sisera. He's associated with chariots of iron. And did you know that iron in the Bible mostly is a negative? You've read in Daniel 2, 42 through 43, you see where Daniel prophesies about the iron being mixed with the miry clay in Daniel 4, 23. And why do you think you hear so much talk about iron men and iRobot, artificial intelligence, or the, the transhumanism movement, all these 
movies and things about robots and man being mixed with machine. It's getting people desensitized to iron mixed with the miry clay. The Antichrist kingdom is has iron mixed with the miry clay. And so Sisera has chariots of iron. And also says in Judges 4.3 that Sisera and Jabin mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And that is exactly what the Antichrist will do. He will have his main target on Israel, will be Israel. Judges 4.4, 4, And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And somebody asked, you know, why was Deborah a prophetess and a judge? Shouldn't a man have been a judge? Well, the answer is simple. In the, in the book of Judges, every man was doing that which was right in his own eyes. What does someone say today when they don't agree with something? They say, well, I've just always seen it this way. Or I've always seen it like this. You know, they live by what's right in their own eyes. Now, Judges 4, 5 through 8. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel and Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun, and I will draw unto thee to the river Kashon Sisera, the captain of Javan's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. So Barak and Deborah have their sights on killing Sisera and his army. And Barak says to Deborah, if thou will go with me, then I will go. So, looking at this as what it pictures, imagine you're up in the third heaven right before the second coming, and the Lord looks at you, and you're on your white horse, and he's on his white horse, and he says, you ready to go? And then before you can get the words out of your mouth, you take off faster than the speed of light. Then you're on earth. And behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. You see, what this pictures is the second coming. In Revelation nineteen fourteen, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. What this could picture is the Lord coming back, and Deborah can picture Israel and Jael, the woman you're about to read about, can picture the bride. And Judges 4 9, and she said, I surely I will surely go with thee. Notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. So the Lord does sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Barak called Zebulun. And Naphtali to Kadesh, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. Isn't it funny? He went with 10,000 men. She, it says, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. That's significant because Jude one fourteen, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. You know, this picture is the second coming. He's coming with ten thousand men. And the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Judges 4, 11 through 13. Now Heber the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zanim, which is by Kadesh, and they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinim, was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him, from Herosheth of the Gentiles into the river Kashan. So Sisera, a type of Antichrist, loves to gather together all the people. It says, and all the people that were with him. And he says he gathered together all his chariots. 
That's what, exactly what the Antichrist is going to do. Gather everybody together. Revelation nineteen nineteen. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. That's what's going to happen at the second coming. The beast, the Antichrist, he's going to gather everybody together to go against the king of kings. And that's exactly what the Lord wants. He said, it's my determination to gather the nations. That way, they're, that way you know, they, uh, they're all in one spot and they can just go kablooey and they become bird food. Judges 4.14, And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. That is just like it will be at the second coming. The Lord goes out before the saints. So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. Just like the Lord will be in front of us. He's our leader, the captain of our salvation. Judges 4.14, And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. So the Lord puts a hurting on him. He discomfited him. With what? The edge of the sword. Just like at the second coming, Revelation nineteen fifteen, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Revelation 2.12, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Barak came with those 10,000 men and Deborah, and the Lord discomfited Sisera. The Lord did it. And I'm, I know this, obviously, it doesn't, this stuff doesn't match perfectly. You know, with the types and pictures, you're not going to find it to match perfectly but it can't be a coincidence there's too much that does match and it says in judges 4 16 but barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto harosheth of the gentiles and all the host of sisera fell upon the edge of the sword and there was not a man left just like the second coming nothing will escape the lord's army and Joel 2, 3, it says, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. There's not going to be a man left. And when the Lord came, came through back there with the edge of the sword, there was no man left. He left no stone unturned. Now, you'll have some people that go into the kingdom from the judgment of the nations. But those, those armies that gather together against him, they're, they're going down. And he, he left Sisera headed for the hills on foot to hide. In Judges 4.17, it says, Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. So he had Sisera so afraid that he was hiding in a woman's tent. Just like in Revelation 6.15, when the Lord comes back, the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. They're running for cover. They're scared to death of the king, the king of kings. It says in Judges 4.18, And Jael went out to meet Sisera, and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. You see, Jael is being wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. She's being crafty. She's beating the devil's man at his own game. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. So she asked for water, but she gave him milk. Don't give the devil what he asked for. 
Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be, when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here, that thou shalt say, No. So he's wanting her to be like a Satan's Rahab the harlot or something. He's wanting her to hide him in there. You know, if Barak or any of those 10,000 men come, he's wanting her to say, No, nobody in here. You know, kind of like a Rahab the harlot did for Israel in the book of Joshua. But then it says in verse 21, Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into, the, into his temples and fastened it into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. This is where you get the saying, She hit the nail on the head. This is where you get the saying, She nailed it. Because that's what she did. She took the hammer. She took the nail. And the hammer pictures the word of God. And she smote it right through his temples. It says in uh, Judges 5.25. He asked water and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter and a lordly dish. So she gave him buttermilk. Uh, this pictures the perfect word of God. Which is likened to milk. In 1 Peter 2, 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. The word of God is your best defense. It says in Judges 5, 26, she put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. The workman's hammer. And with the hammer, she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken through his temples. Notice this is a workman's hammer. Second Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Your Bible is a workman's hammer. And Jeremiah 23.29 Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. She gave him milk, a picture of the word. She took her workman's hammer She's the, the workman. You're a workman. If you're in the book, studying it constantly, the hammer is your word of God. And she also got a nail. In Ecclesiastes twelve ten through 11, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as gold, goads, and as nails, fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. The word is your hammer. The word is your nails. Our word is our weapon. And right now, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4. We walk in the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We got a King James Bible. We're in a spiritual battle. We overcome the wicked one with the words. The word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, Hebrews 4.12 says. And we use words to fight off the forces of darkness, that is spiritual wickedness. And at the second coming, we will use the hammer, the word, to fight off spiritual and physical wickedness. And jail pictures somebody who studied as a workman, and made herself approved to God. And she also doctrinally pictures the church coming back with the Lord at the second coming. And Satan is bruised under her feet. As it talks about in Romans 16, 20. And in Judges 5, 26 through 27, she put her hand to the nail. And her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smote off his head. When she had pierced and stricken through his temples at her feet, he bowed, he fell, he lay down at her feet. He bowed. He fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. And it says in Romans 16, 20, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Just like Sisera, at her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. And Judges 5, 28, The mother of Sisera looked out at a window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? You're going to have people counting on the Antichrist to make it through Armageddon. 
just like our hope is in Jesus Christ and he's not going to fail us, the Antichrist is going to fail them. They're going to be looking out at the window, crying through the lattice. Where is he? Where is this great man? In Judges 4.22, And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. The Antichrist will sit in the temple, but he's going to end up getting nailed in his own temple. In Judges 4.23, so God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. God subdued on that day Jabin, king of Canaan. At the second coming, the Antichrist is killed, pictured by Sisera. And Satan is also bound. And Jabin can picture him. In Judges 4.24, And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Just as at the second coming, Israel will prosper and prevail, and Jesus Christ will set up the kingdom and sit on a throne in Jerusalem. And in Zechariah 8.23, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold, of, take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And if there is any doubt in your mind that this story is a great picture of the second coming of Jesus Christ, then you need to read Judges chapter 5. It leaves no doubt to it. Judges 5, 4, and 5 say, it says, Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water, the mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. Because, you know why? The Lord comes in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God in the second coming. That's why the mountains are going to melt. Judges 5.19 The kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan, and to knock by the waters of Megiddo, they took no gain of money. Do you see that? By the rivers of Megiddo. By the waters of Megiddo. That is Armageddon. Judges 5.20. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Look at that. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. By the waters of Megiddo. If this doesn't Show you that this is a picture of the second coming. I don't know what will. Revelation 19, 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. They come. The people that come down are from heaven. They fought from heaven. But this has been another uh, episode of Bible villains fighting the famine. And I hope this has gave you something to think about, to bite down on and chew on for the day, and just stay in the book.